Hello, my name is Stephanie Beatley. I'm the nursing supervisor at the Pike County Health Department. And today I'm joined by Dr. Rangel, our public um, health director at the Pike County Health Department. And we're here to um, talk about the implementation of the needle exchange program in Pike County, and also talk about the rise in hepatitis cases um, in Pike County and also in the state of Kentucky. Dr. Rangel, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me today. Um, as I always say, we do a lot of programs in the health department, but today we want to concentrate in the incidence of hepatitis C in Pike County and also in the Big Sandy area. In uh, the program that we would like to implement, that is the uh, syringe exchange program. Um, you know, sometimes we think hepatitis. Um, when I ask people, do you know what hepatitis is? Um, a lot of people don't know exactly what hepatitis is. And um, one of the things that people always think, you know, hepatitis is an infection produced by a viral infection, which is, this is just half true. 48% of the hepatitis is produced by virus, but we have another 52% that is produced for alcohol, people who drink, or, or drugs, or medication. There are other things that produce hepatitis. Um, hepatitis is a disease, it's, it's very old. Uh, when you read the books, you find that uh, by 1727, the Greeks decided to call hepatitis a uh, this disease that make people change the color of the skin. The skin became yellow, the eyes became the eyes became yellow, also they lost appetite, and many of these people die. That's what the Greek call hepatitis. Hepatitis because hepa means liver and iris means inflammation. So this term comes since in 1727. Uh, there are five types of hepatitis, but the, I mean, the, the most important is hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. So uh, is, is any difference between hepatitis A, B, and C? Yeah, the, there is a, uh, is a difference, but the symptoms are very much the same. You know, people lose their appetite, becomes yellow, and start vomiting, what is gonna change is what happened after. You know, like in hepatitis A, most likely the liver is going to recover. Um, usually nothing is gonna happen. In hepatitis B, many people who suffer from hepatitis B, some of them, they're gonna have a chronic hepatitis. Um, and those, some of the people that are gonna be waiting for a liver transplant, the hepatitis A is transmitted for oral fecal uh, route. I mean, uh, contaminated water or contaminated food. Hepatitis B is transmitted by uh, body fluids. You know, for having sex, for instance, that produces hepatitis. Hepatitis B or needle stick also, you know, uh, transmitted the hepatitis B. Now, we have the hepatitis C. That is the big, big problem because we have a vaccine for hepatitis A, we have a vaccine for hepatitis B, but we do not have a vaccine for hepatitis C. And the, the, the other thing is that uh, many, many people die for hepatitis, for chronic infection, whether they have a cirrhosis or, or any other uh, liver um, problems waiting, as I said, for the transplant. The liver is such an important organ that has more than 50 different functions, you know, from uh, the, the protein metabolism, the fat metabolism, the, the glucose, um, cleans the, the organ of the toxins, for instance, the, there is a, um, a cleaning process that has to, be produce, has to be done in the liver, and if that is not done, the people 
die and also there are um, other um, the bile that which is produced in the liver is cleans the liver and cleans the uh, the intestine because that is going to produce some changes in the fat metabolism. So, I mean, this is a, such an important organ that that we really, really have to to prevent any disease like uh, you know getting shot for hepatitis A for hepatitis B. So what we see, you know, with this, this is a person who has a cancer in, in, in the liver. Um, this is a person who has hepatitis C and with the years has a cancer. Uh, I must say that a lot of people who, who suffer from hepatitis C, maybe 20 to 25 percent of them, they are going to cure by themselves. But still there will be a high percent of people who are going to have a cancer, 80 percent of the cancers in the liver are produced for hepatitis C. And 50% of the cirrhosis, which is also an um, inflammation of, of the liver, um, and pretty much destruction of all the liver functions, 50% is produced for hepatitis C. So what we see here is a perfect normal liver. You know, that's the way it should be, you know. A uh, smooth surface in, but if we see uh, the, the next slide, you will see how they start changing. You know, the one in the top left, you will see how there are some changes, and this is cirrhosis. This is cirrhosis, it starts changing in color, the surface starts changing, but you see in the right side is the way it should be, you know, a normal liver. And uh, the next slide, we are going to see even worse, you know, what we see here is the cirrhosis. And when you see a liver like this, more than 50 or 60% of the function of the liver stop it. And then um, we have, for instance, uh, there is a substance which is called ammonium that has to be eliminated by the liver. Um, and when this is not eliminated, and then the ammonia accumulate in the body and the people die. The people die for ammonia and encephalitis. Um, and, and that's what the most important functions of, of, of the liver. Uh, the next slide, so we see different stages. You know, we see a normal liver, we have a cirrhosis, and then we have a cancer in, uh, in the right side. So what I, I'm trying to say is that here, and that's why the, our point today is we have, we have in, in Kentucky, in Eastern Kentucky, we have more, more hepatitis C than any other place in the country. So how do we get hepatitis C, you know, before, um, before the 19, uh, 1990s, you know, hemodialysis and then the blood transfusion until 1992 and then we can get from infected mother to child during birth, and then we, um, baby boomers, you know, the, this has always called me the attention. People who are born after 1945, they are higher incidence of hepatitis C. So why? I mean, nobody answered that question, and I think it has to be with, you know, the 60s and, uh, and the time that the, 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 the people behave different. But nobody has given the, the right answer. Why the baby boomers, people who are f born at the 45, has a high, higher incidence of hepatitis C. Um, the, the transmission for sexual contact are very rare. The most important way, the most important uh, transmission is through sharing syringes. Um, and that is the most common way why here in Pike County, 
are such a high incidence of hepatitis C. We are not talking about HIV, you know, of course, uh, but the problem here, we don't have as many cases of HIV as hepatitis C. When we see this map, we are going to see that the Kentucky is in a different color. Uh, the pink color, a pink color is because we have the highest, the highest incidence of hepatitis C in the country, not only in numbers, but also in rates. If we see other, other states, for instance, California, you see California has, I don't know how many more habitants than Kentucky. However, we have more cases of hepatitis C in Kentucky than in California or New York. So um, if we see the next slide, we are going to see, um, this is the rate, you know, no matter how the population, this is a rate is when we adapt the cases to the population and still, you know, by far we have the number one in the country with more cases of hepatitis C if we take in, into account the rate. We have the highest rate of hepatitis C in the country. Um, the next slide, we, what happened in our state? What we see in 19, in, that was in 2009, 2008, when we saw, you know, how the incidence of hepatitis in C increased, you know, that was a big changes. Um, there are a lot of people associate this with, you know, the lack of employment. Um, you, you usually, you know, drug addiction is, um, is a social problem. Um, related to um, to job lack of jobs and um, many many other social uh, social issues, as I said before, uh, but in Kentucky since the 2009 uh, 2008 that we had this big problem with you know with the mines this went up. You will see the next slide. Uh, this is very you know very important slide, when we see the country, we see there are very few dots, the green dots. Green dot means that there are more cases of hepatitis C. So we see that in Eastern Kentucky, we have a lot of dots. It has been said that, you know, each state has one county, one county that has a higher incidence of hepatitis C. Each state has one county that has a risk of hepatitis C. Well, in Kentucky, we have 57 counties, not one. We have 57 counties at risk of hepatitis C. So um, and, and, and when we see this, you know, as most of the cases are concentrated in our area, in Pike County and in the big sandy area. So this is a problem that we we have, we have to confront, and the only, one of the ways, of course, the, the best way is to stop, you know, people using drugs. I mean, the people start, uh, uh, stop using drugs, of course, we, we wouldn't have this. But having, you know, this, the, the other way to stop the is the needle exchange program, people should use a new syringe, a new needle if they are going to use drugs. Uh, more people died from drug overdoses in the United States in 2014 than in the previous years on record. Um, and again, you know, Kentucky was number four in drug overdoses death. Um, and we have no improve. I mean, I think the, the numbers are getting worse unless we do something to stop this. Um, the, that is the, the death for, uh, you know, the number of population, and we are number th third in death 
in the country. So um, uh, I'll, there are more people dying for drug overdoses than any other of the big states like uh, Florida, New York, or, or California. I mean, so this is something serious that we have to, to really confront and establish program to stop the program. Um, in 2014, five states with the highest rate of drug overdoses death were west to where it was Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Um, they say Ohio, but in reality, you know, the fourth state with the highest is Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, and Tennessee. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people saying, uh, and that is one of the 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 critics about this program is that a lot of people is afraid that giving needles to people to prevent the, in, the incidence of hepatitis C is that this is going to increase the people who is going to use drugs. I mean, this has been studied since, since 2006 for, by CDC here in the United States and other countries like Sweden, uh, has been shown that the incidence of hepatitis C has decreased. In Sweden, for instance, the incidence of hepatitis C decreased half just to using to, uh, with the needle exchange program. Uh, has many studies have shown this, um, that by any means increase the incidence of drug use in the places where this program has been in place. So what we're trying, what we're trying to show in the previous slide is that how many counties, how many counties is every state has only one county who is, you know, with this tendency to, to, to have a lot of cases. So you can see, you know, Eastern Kentucky or um, West Virginia, I mean, we are, the state and the and the place in in the in Kentucky where we have a higher risk of hepatitis C. Of course, as I said before, not only hepatitis C, but you're going to have also hepatitis B, and you're going to have a high incidence of HIV. So, if we go to the next slide, so how are we going to solve this? I mean. As I said before, we have to establish the syringe exchange program because otherwise this is not going to stop. This is going to keep increasing the same way that has been increasing since 2008, 2009. We, we saw the slide how, you know, how tremendously has increased since uh, you know, in the, in the last uh, seven or eight years. Dr. Uh, Rangel, why don't you explain to people about the law in regards to the needle exchange program and how this all came about? Okay, so um, the, the last year, by March uh, 2015, the, the problem was so big in the state that the legislature approved um, a bill, an emergency bill, uh, and the governor signed it because the, the problem was getting out of hands. And now there are some counties that they are, uh, they, they, they are you know, um, um, using this program. One of the things that we, we have, and, and there's a lot of criticism that we don't have money. The money have to come. I mean, what I say we don't have money is that there is no federal money, uh, there is no state money for this program, so the, pro the money has to come from the counties. However, uh, in December this past year, the, um, the Senate and, and the House, they approved that federal money could be used to 
prevent for the needle exchange program in, in order to, you know, to prevent the incidence of hepatitis C. And this money most likely will be available in July this year. So this is um, the counties where are more chances, more, more easy to spread the hepatitis C. And we see, you know, the Pike County, uh, of course, in red. Um, uh, and with this tremendous, you know, program, the, the problem that we have, and, and that's what we need, you know, all the community support, support the, all the organizations, support of the police, support of the lawyers, support the, the magist magistrate, the mayor, um, the judges. Um, in order, the community have to, go, have to come together in order to, to stop this problem. Um, and I think this slide right here shows that there are um, some needle exchange programs already occurring around the state and have been successful so far. Yeah, there are, I think there are seven or eight counties that they are just beginning. Um, I, I was reading this, this morning that the Lexington approved, but they are going to start in September, I think. To the program, so um, some of this the, the problem with these places that have already approved is where to do it, because you know nobody wants to do it in the in the health department. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we after this is approved, and then we will find a place, and I believe this place will be out of the health department. And then we will do the needle exchange program. That is not going to be done inside the building of the health department. And what has to occur in order for this needle exchange program to um, be allowed to be in the county? What has to occur? Who has to agree on this? Well, uh, we have to, well, the community in general, <coughs> we have to educate the community. We, we, that's what we're trying to do today. But also the city the mayor have to agree with, uh, with the magistrates and, uh, and also the, the, the judge um, have to agree. Um, of course, I, I, I will, um, I'm planning to talk to a lot of people with all the, the, the community, as many community members, and also the police, because it's important, you know, that they are part of this, uh, this program. So the more people that agree in this, will be the much better. The, the other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, when we buy one needle and one syringe, that costs 97 cents, 97 cents. But to treat one patient with hepatitis C costs $90,000, $90,000 versus 90 cents. So if this for instance, if this patient has hepatitis C plus HIV, the cost goes to almost half a million dollars. So we could prevent, spend that kind of money with 97 cents. So here is the exact number, you know, with HIV is $380,000. If the patient has hepatitis C, is $85,000. So it's a big saving, and that's public, public health. We as a public health, we need to prevent these diseases, uh, trying to cover as, as many people as we can. So a lot of people may know, agree, some people may agree, but that's the idea, you know, explain the people, try to bring the people on board, so um, to protect, I mean, to protect the community. The study has shown that, you know, that, as I said, I think I mentioned this before, the fact that you, that we are doing the needle exchange program, that does not increase the use of drug. As I said before, I named it the, the Sweden study, and also I, I mentioned it, the CDC study that began in 2006 and, and lasted for about six, seven years and they show, you know, the, the drop, instead of increasing, there was a drop in the use of 
drug because no, the idea also is not just give me the give me the old syringe. I give you the new syringe. It's also take these people and send these people to the places where they can get some education. I mean, some to help those people. I mean, to stop using drugs. That's that's the other thing. It's not just changes. You know, helping these people to stay away from drugs. Uh, and, and that's that's part of the program that we are trying to you know to put together. Um, so uh, and also you know has not been any increase in crime. Um, for the contrary, you know, has been reported that that has been safer for the community. So when when a community adopt this type of programs. So it sounds like the needle exchange program is in the very early stages of being created. Um, it's definitely a need for the community because some, um, some high spots that we, we, we noted in this presentation is that definitely the hepatitis rates in Eastern Kentucky are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's due to a lot of it being the IV drug use. And we have a problem that has to be addressed in, in yeah. some way. And also, um, like you said, the needle exchange program does not encourage, you know, increased drug use. Um, our main focus on this program is to prevent the transmission of hepatitis C. You know, I, I, I think, that's my personal opinion, that we have this hepatitis C program for years here in Kentucky, and we just saw to the other side. There are about 168 counties in the United States using the needle exchange programs. And they began in 2006. 2006 was 11 years ago. So, you know, while these counties were doing the needle exchange program, we were looking to the other side. So what happened? And then we have a huge amount, huge amount of hepatitis C when we should have done this years ago. And, uh, and I think, you know, maybe the people were not well explained. Maybe we, we have, you know, adopted this before. But this is not new. I mean, this is 2006. Many counties are using it. Mm -hmm. But not here in Kentucky. Exactly. So. Do you have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Well, I would like to... Um, uh, ask for the support of the community. We need to work together. We need to stop this hepatitis C epidemic because more and more people is going to get sick. The treatment is too expensive. There is not just there is no money. I mean, for the treatment, the insurance don't pay, Medicare don't pay, Medicaid don't pay. So this is about preventions and we need to prevent this disease. So we wanted to ask the community to work together. This is not going to increase the crime. This is not going to increase the use of drugs, but it's going to improve the health of our community. Okay. So if people wanted more information on um, the needle exchange program or what's going on with it, could they just call the Pike County Health Department? Yes, they will uh, call the Pike County Health Department, and there will be two meetings. Um, one will be city, um, this meeting in the city, and one in the uh, also in the county. Mm -hmm. I think this is an open meeting. They can go there and they can expose their opinions. They are, if they agree or they don't agree with us, that's the time and the moment to express what they feel. Um, and support the program. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ringagel. It's been a pleasure having you on today, and your presentation has been very informative, and uh, we look forward to seeing how this program progresses. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you all. Um, um, I hope for the best. I, I hope that this program will be approved before July 1st, hopefully. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us this afternoon.